All right, we're here with Menton John Matthews III, also known as Menton III, an artist here at Dragon Con, whose upcoming work right now is uh, Silent Hill uh, Past Life. So why don't you tell us some about that? Um, it's written by Tom Waltz, who's an absolutely phenomenal writer. Uh, he's also editing the book, um, so that's really funny and easy. Um, mm -hmm. It, the story for it is, is great. I'd love to tell you all about it. He'd kill me if I did. Um, it's kind of a dead Woody type situation. It's a it's basically a a preview and it's a backstory of the video game that'll be coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the preview copy, it talks about kind of a reformed kind of a, a rogue or whatever who's married a godly woman and she wants to settle down in a nice town and for some reason they pick Silent Hill. So Yeah, I mean there's there's a there's a big backstory to that mm -hmm. as to why they pick that. Mm -hmm. Um I'm a little picky with the scripts that I that I choose to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, Silent Hill there have been times that there have been, you know, they're doing stuff just for IP. Mm -hmm. But but Tom has outdone himself with the story like it actually shocked me. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the ending, I was like, "Oh my God, I, I didn't see that coming." Yeah, yeah. And the other things, the, the other you know, the subplots and the red herrings in it mm -hmm. have just been phenomenal. And you know, the other thing about working with IDW is, with this book, they said, you know, this is our book. Mm -hmm. Add panels, take away panels, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's just been a, a hugely fun experience working with them with it. Um, you know, I did ZVR before that, mm -hmm. uh, eight or nine pages in the front of that book, mm -hmm. and so I guess I did a decent enough job where they gave me my whole book and I got to do the covers. And I, I don't think they could have picked a better book than this and a um, better writer for me with this. We've had such a great time with it. Mm -hmm. Did you have any experience with the game Silent Hill before you took on the project? To be honest with you, I was a really big fan of it. Oh, okay. And um, I really liked the movie as well. I thought okay. for what it was, it was a phenomenally good movie. Mm -hmm. It had great visuals, mm -hmm. a great soundtrack. But the video games, you know, it's really hard to scare me. Mm -hmm. I don't scare at all. And so someone's like, you gotta play this game, it'll scare you. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, and I, I can't claim that it ever scared me, but I was really intrigued by it and I loved what they did with it. I loved how they kind of turned video games into something that was different for me. And I, maybe people did it before or, or after, but uh, for me, my first introduction to like a true story-driven video game was Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. So when I got the email, you know, do you want to do this? Uh, initially, I was really excited just to be part of that IP, but you know, I was worried about the script. But it turned out really great too. But yeah, I was a big fan of it. Big fan of Silent Hill. Oh, what was was there any particular challenge that came to, to kind of developing something from a video game to a, a comic book? No, mm -hmm. and it's because of IDW. Oh. IDW treats artists insanely well. Mm -hmm. um, they they really let you go creative crazy, which is I think you know if I was going to hire an artist to do a book of mine, you know I would hire that artist to do his what he would do. Mm -hmm. And they, they, that's what they do. They don't stifle you. They don't tell you to change much. Mm -hmm. They really kind of let you do what you want to do. And artistically, you sit back and you're like, wow, okay, this, this company trusts me and I can go kind of crazy here. And you've got editors to back you up and go, well, this is a little too far out. Mm -hmm. um, or this is really good, you know, back and forth. It's really IDW's fault that it's so easy to do. So I haven't had any challenges with this. Uh, Konami has to approve a lot of the stuff, and they've been nothing but nice um, and supportive. Uh, so it's really just been a, a, an absolute dream project thus far. Is this connected to any of the video games that are out now, or is this backstory for another one? Well, it's the, it's basically the way I understand it, and with the things that I've read, because um, they're also pretty weird with me about the script for the game. Um, if you read this comic and you play the next game. A lot of it's going to be very interconnected, and there, it, you don't have to read the comic, you don't have to play the game. Mm -hmm. The stories are both standalone, mm -hmm. but there are certain things that happen within this comic and within the game that'll make a lot more sense. Plus, there's a there's a character in this comic from the next video game. Okay, okay. So, how did you develop your technique? I'm just going to pan down to some of this right there. Uh, how much tape do you have? <laughs> I've got five hours of well, I've got two hours on a battery. Um, <laughs> I, I never went to art school or anything like that. I bought a book from the 1400s, um, and I basically read that and learned how to paint from that. Um, I mainly oil paint. Uh, most of the comics I do are oil painted. I do some watercolor, but I make all my own paints. Um, and I make my own gesso and, and you know this kind of thing. So it's a real visceral process for me. That it's a it's kind of a, a work of love to do that kind of stuff. You're like you don't need to do that, and I do do some digital stuff when I have to. But um, 
for me, the love of doing all this is the smell of the oil paint and the, the visceral quality of painting something and turning minerals of the earth into a picture, you know? Because when you're, you're using real paint and you're using like lapis lazuli or lead, it's all minerals from the earth that wind up making an image, you know? So it's almost like jewelry that's, that's mashed together to make a picture. And for me, there's a magic there that, that you can't get anywhere else, you know? How long does it take you to do a comic then? Is it? I would imagine oil paint takes longer than you know, um, just waiting for it to dry. I self-published this book before <laughs> I started working with IDW. It took me uh, about six months to do that. It's 48 pages. I don't really know the math there. Nowadays, I can do about a page a day. Um, but it's you know it, it is kind of tough to do. But at the end of the day, when you sit back and you look at your your comic that you've just published, and it's all oil painted or it's all hand painted. Um, there's a sense of pride in that, and then, you know, people will come up to you and be like, you know, I've never seen a comic look like this, and that's, you know, obviously they haven't seen, like, Sienkiewicz or Ashley Wood, but, you know, it's still a big compliment, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, so what do you look for in a script? You were saying you're pretty selective with what you choose. Well, as, the, as an artist of a comic book, you're, you're, the, you're the DP, you're the director, you're the actors. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta, you gotta feel part of you in it. Like part of you has to resonate. Like you know, you've read stories that resonated with you, and if you're gonna spend months and months of your life, uh, 12 hours a day, oil painting a comic, you gotta love it. It's gotta be part of you, um, and you, you at least gotta be able to put some of yourself in, into it. Um, so I, I look for basically part of me in it. You know, the only reason I paint is to kind of externalize the interior, so I can look at it out here. You know, like a dream or something. So you, then you've got to wait to see what you saw, and it's there, other people can see it. And when you're painting it, sometimes you notice things about yourself that you wouldn't have seen before. So a comic script kind of has to fall into that category for me to be really all that interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that answers your question. It does, absolutely. Well, and then you mentioned a mystery project that's coming up. What, what can you tell us about that? Um, I really I can't tell you anything. Okay. I mean, um, one thing IDW is good on is making you sign confidentiality agreements. <laughs> And I love everybody at that company so much that I would never break my word to them. Um, for the last, since February, I w I've been working on a project with them. Um, uh, it's a pretty big project, pretty big deal for them, but I, I, I'm sorry, I can't say anything about it. That's all I can say. Okay. Well, then last question. Are you enjoying Dragon Con? I love Dragon Con. I, you know, I was, I was at the first Dragon Con. As, wow. a, as a wee pup. What, even though 87? It was, it, I don't know. Some, yeah, yeah, back then. It was, you know, it was a hazy, let's just say those days were a little hazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been coming to DragonCon for many, many years, and I'm very proud that, you know, when they give you like guest status and stuff, it's like, wow, you know, it's, it's very, very humbling. So it's great to be here. Excellent. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.